standing with a choir with a song book in your hand. Take him red church and we'll turn to page 130. 130. If you got a day in your life that you never shall forget. A lot of days in my life that I won't forget, but phase one stands out, Brother Steve. Phase one, I said, stands out. That's the day Christ came my way, touched my heart, 
told me I was lost, said I needed to get right with him, and he let me get right with him. Amen, amen. Let's all sing together. I never shall forget the day. Long years ago, when out in sin, I no hope, no peace within. Down on my knees in agony, I prayed to Jesus and He gladly sent me free. I never shall forget the day when all the burdens from my soul rolled away. It made me. kind of shape his pulpit's going to be in when I give it to Brother Holbrooks. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good to be saved, isn't it? Yeah. I never shall forget the day. Yeah. Amen. I don't, I, and, and I've told you the story over and over about Bob Jones Sr. Uh, when he didn't even know his children, his family, his mind. But uh, if you talk to him, he'd give you, t- he'd give me, you t- his testimony. Yeah. They put him on a platform one time, going to get him to say a few words. And he said, let me tell you about the day Jesus saved me. He went through it. When he got done, he said, let me tell you about the day. I don't know how many times he, he gave his testimony before they got him to sit down. He remember a whole lot, but he never forgot that. Praise God. Amen. I'm glad I can go back in my heart. And when the devil tempts, when the devil tries to, to rob my joy, I say, I don't belong to you anymore. Let me take you back to the place. Let me, let's talk about that conviction of the Holy Ghost. 
Let's talk about the gospel. Let's talk about the day I bowed my knee in an old living room and, and called on the Lord Jesus Christ and I passed from death unto life. Old things passed away. Behold, all things become new. I became a new creation in Christ Jesus. He flees. Amen. Thank God. If you don't know, if you don't know that tonight, I, I hope you will before you leave because he, it is it's the best thing that ever happened in my life. And I've had some good things happen to me. And bless his holy name. Well, uh, thank God for church. Amen. Amen. Thank God for church. I appreciate church. And we're glad to see all of you. If you're visiting tonight, you're an honored guest. Thank you so much. You that are watching live stream, thank you. We appreciate you. If you're physically able to go to church, we'd love to see you right here in the Sanctuary Bible Baptist Church. And of course, let me give these announcements quickly, and then we'll receive an offering. But uh, don't forget that uh, uh, visitation first Saturday of the month. Uh, so it'll be a couple, it'll be not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Ladies' Bible study the first Monday of the month. The men's devotion fellowship will be the second Monday of the month, all here at the church, both at 6.30. Youth devotions on Sundays at 5.30, Wednesdays at 6.30. Prayer rooms a quarter till every service. Also, don't forget the, the list back after Brother Honeycutt. If you can bring something there, I would appreciate that. And then uh, the food for our food box out here. Then uh, also, if you'd like to get some gift cards, Walmart gift cards for uh, folks in Kentucky, you pick those up in the next week or two and have them here as quick as you can. Give them to Brother David Eubanks, and he'll take care of them from there. Amen. Any other announcements? Did I fail to mention anything? Did I miss anything? All right, let's all stand. Our ushers are coming. The ushers are coming. And uh, you, let's all stand together and uh, give that which belongs to God. Amen. Amen. Shelby, come on up here. And Andrew, y'all sing one, if you would. And uh, while they're getting ready, and uh, we'll let them, let them come on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank God. What a blessing to give back. A portion that God's blessed us with. Amen. All right, Brother Carl. Dear Lord, we come again tonight. Lord, just thank you for allowing opportunity to be back in your house, Father. Lord, we thank you for being so good to us. Yes. Lord, just, you've been so good. We just can't thank you enough. Lord, Lord just pray you continue to bless and have your way, Father. Be with all the sick. Lord, you know each one what's standing up, Father. Just pray you put your hand upon them, Lord. Just have your will there, Father. Pray, Lord, for the service tonight. You've been our pastor. Yes. Lord, God, just use it in my special way, Lord, not Father. Hearts be touched, people be stirred. We pray one comes in lost. Not by many not, Lord. They come to for to leave his church house, Father. Bless this offering. Those have it, those not have it. We'll thank you and love you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Church, you can be seated.
of the story. Praise the Lord. What a blessing. What a blessing. Praise God. Whew. I'm just standing here for a second. I don't I, I can just roll on with, with, with the plan. I don't want to roll on with the plan too quick. Just waiting on the Lord. Waiting on, all right. Ain't God good? Amen. All right. We're going to pray tonight and ask God to touch the service. And then, of course, we've got many that need prayer. And uh, thank God that he is, he is able to answer prayer and take care of every need we have. I do want to pray for Sister Judy Kirkman. I went over to see her yesterday, and she was uh, very sick and chills and sick. And, uh, of course, I let the, the family know, and, and they went down there and ended up calling 911. They got her admitted into the hospital, and they still can't figure out where her infection's coming from. Uh, so y'all pray for Miss Judy. Lord, keep his hand on her. Keep praying for Brother uh, Chris Honeycutt. Also, Landon Honeycutt's got surgery on the 28th. Let's remember him. Uh, also, Miss Joe Carty, Brother LaVon, Ada Green, uh, Donald Townsend, uh, Brother Bud Wilson. His surgery went good. He's home recuperating. Keep praying for him. Uh, Martha Phillips needs prayer tonight. Jeanette Phillips and her mother, Donald Ravan, his family, uh, Judy Kirkman, Tony Blue, Jackie Oxendine. Uh, Earl Gosnell, Lillian Blackwell, Vivian Howard, Kathy Kerr, Francis McSwain, uh, Brother Randy Green's daughter, Larry Turner. Uh, they moved him to uh, North Grove there at White Oak at, at, for rehab for a couple of weeks. Pray for him. Uh, Melvin Linda Ballou, uh, Sister Ann Oliver. Uh, remember her, still having treatments and stuff. Uh, remember, remember that. God touch her. Jay Cagle, Maria McCarty, uh, Joy Marcy's mother, Bobby Mann. And also uh, Evelyn and Dan Jones, also Miss Evelyn's sister that passed away. Let's keep praying for that family. Uh, Libby Foster, Louise Mills, Brother Jerry Cantrell, uh, Miss Alice Small, uh, Billy and Patsy Hayes, Luke Townsend, uh, Darlene Blake. Uh, let's remember that. And also, uh, I don't know if I mentioned Earl Gosson, y'all yeah, did. Uh, so keep praying for all these that God help them and touch them in a special way. Anybody in this section in the middle here? Got a, about a, yes, ma'am. Procedure Monday. Amen. Let's remember that. Miss Mildred, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Remember that. We sure will. Sure will. Anybody else in this section? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Right. Let's remember that. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else over here? Anybody on this side? Yes, sir, bud. Brother Chris. Yes, sir. Let's see hand. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. That's a blessing. Brother Jack? Yes, sir. We sure will. Brother Walt? Yes, yes, sir. Let's pray about that. I see the hand back there. Yes, babe. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's, that, yes, bud. You sure will. You sure will. Anybody else over here? Anybody over here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Miss Lisa's. Let's keep praying about that. Anybody else up with Kelvin? Who? Oh, really? Let's remember them. Mercy. Bless their heart. Let's pray for them. I wish that stuff would disappear. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, Miss Lynn. We're praying for you, buddy. 
Absolutely. All ice cream you can eat. Just think of that. Anybody over here? Yes, anybody over here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rick Carl? Oh, mercy. Just remember that. Yes, sir. Anybody else over here? Unspoken? All right. All that can we like to. We'll come around the altar. The Lord's heard each need. And let's pray over them. And also let's pray over the remainder of the service tonight that God's will be done. Lord, give us what we need. We only want what he wants tonight. Amen. All right. Father, we do love you tonight. We come in Jesus' name. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus, what a wonderful name. And Lord, I thank you for uh, moving in our midst thus far tonight. And I thank you, Lord, for the, the Lord Jesus. And I, it's in his holy name we come. And thank you for the gift of salvation in Christ alone. Thank you for grace through faith, Father. Thank you, Lord God, that for the blood of Jesus that cleanseth us from sin, all sin. And I pray now for each request of prayer. Lord, there's been many, uh, spiritual, physical, emotional, financial, we plead the blood of Jesus, that you touch them, help them, and, and take care of them, Lord, in a mighty way. Lord, put a hedge around each one. Those in the hospital, those in nursing homes, those homesick tonight, we pray for them. Lord, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Lord, you bless the seed of Abraham, Lord, and bless them and touch them and, and have mercy upon them, I pray. And, Lord, I do pray for this country, Lord, the leaders of our country, Lord, that you would uh, convict their hearts, save them, Lord, guide their mind, and, Lord, just that we might live quiet, peaceable lives. And, Lord, I do pray for the message tonight, dear God, the Spirit of God, for Jesus' sake. Preach through us, illuminate our mind, our heart, and our mouth. Make preaching easy, Lord. Remove every hindrance, stumbling block, touch my mind, and I can focus. And, Lord, enable to preach with the anointing of the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Bless the Lord. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for prayer time. Amen. Brother Jonathan, you and Miss Jessica, y'all come sing. spirit have revival it satisfies my soul with hope that I can hold Lord I thank you for the book you've given word of life breath of heaven perfect truth from page to page that you preserve from age to age, from Genesis to Revelation, anywhere I look. Every phrase leads me straight to Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the book. The master plan revealed to man, written For the book you've given, words of life, breath of heaven, perfect truth from page to page that you've preserved from age to age, from Genesis to Revelation, 
Anywhere I look, every phrase leads me straight to Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the book. Every phrase leads me straight to Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the book. I enjoy the good singing. I appreciate what God's done through song tonight. Thank God the message in song about, about Jesus and salvation stirs your heart. And I bless his holy name for that. All right, I want you to go with me to the book of Ephesians, please. Uh, the epistle of, of Ephesians. Paul writes to the Ephesians. And a message that God has birthed in my heart. Uh, it's in my heart. God knows that. Uh, and I'm not... I'm not trying to apologize for the message before I even preach it, but I want you to know this is deep in my heart. And I want to read, look at verse 23 through 25, and uh, help me be praying for me, and, and I just want the will of God. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, 23, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Let's pray. Father, we do love you tonight. We come in the name of Jesus, that name that's above every name. And we plead the blood of Jesus, Lord, over the message. Spirit of God, for Christ's sake, please preach through me that we would see Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you'd remove every hindrance and stumbling block and touch my mind and my heart and my mouth. And Father, I thank you, dear God, for your precious word as they just sang about. I'm glad it's right, it's truth, and it will not return void. And Lord, our, our, our life is to obey what's in this book and to be obedient, Father, and, and to live accordingly to it. And Lord, I know we've all failed, but Lord, our heart's desire is to, to live this book. And I'm glad your commandments are not grievous, and we pray you give us grace and strength in these days. And Lord, I pray for each one here that don't know you as their Savior, I pray this will be the day, the time, and the hour. Lord, if you convict them of their sin, they'd be saved. Lord, thy will be done in it all. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen and amen. Uh, I want to use this text tonight to preach a message on a Christ-like husband. A Christ-like husband. Now, I had this wrote down as a title, but it, was, it took me two whole lines. I said, that's too long of a title. And my title was going to be, hey, man, are you being the kind of husband you would want your daughter to have? Amen. Uh, that's too long of a title, isn't it? They couldn't even get that on a CD. They'd had to, they'd had to go around it. Amen. <laughs> uh, but I think about that. And now that I have a daughter, I, I want to be the man, uh, the kind of man, uh, the husband, or kind of husband that I would want my daughter to marry. Amen. Uh, so I'm carrying a burden tonight. I'm carrying a burden tonight for our young families. Uh, now, preacher, what have we done? Nothing. Uh, you've done nothing. I, I see all the potential of our young families. Uh, I see uh, you growing and maturing in the things of God, and it is a very great blessing to see. So I know that Satan is going to try to tear our young families apart. Those that are just now starting families with children, and, and I see those children coming, they, they're getting them here for devotions, and they're getting them here for Sunday school, and, and they're getting them here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and the devil don't like it. And if he can attack this generation of young families, and he's attacking every family, and every husband, every wife, every child, I know that, but my heart tonight it's on the young families. And if he can tear them apart, he can disrupt the future of the church. Now I know the church is going to stand. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But I'm speaking about the local churches. If he can destroy them, if he can tear them down, uh, the future is unsettled for the local church. Amen. 
Uh, I, I told you the other day, uh, I went to the doctor and, and they, the nurse said, how old are you? And I said, 53. And then it dawned on me, mercy, I'm 53. I couldn't believe it. And I posted something about being middle-aged and Brother Andy Wells said, middle-aged with a question mark and a question mark beside it. And I got to thinking, no, I'm not middle-aged anymore. I'm over the hill. <laughs> I ain't went through the woods yet, but I'm over the hill. But yet, I mean, if we're going to believe the book of Psalms that says uh, the average lifestyle of a man is three score and ten, and by reason of strength, four score, 70, 80 years, then I'm, I'm over middle age. I know I don't look like it, but that's just the facts of it. I am. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I need it after that statement. But I do see how Satan is attacking, and he's doing it, because he don't like these, these young families having any kind of zeal for God. He wants, to, he wants to tear the homes apart. He wants, to, he wants y'all all to divorce and scatter the children. He wants everything to be in disarray in your family. And he's working on you. Now, can I repeat something that I said Sunday morning? Yes, thank you. He's doing it with technology. He's doing it with technology, and, and he's got us all mesmerized with these things. He's got us all mesmerized with these things, and I know it to be the fact, and God's dealing with me about this in my own life. So I'm not pointing fingers. It's something I'm dealing with. Cut my flashlight on. It's something I'm dealing with in my own life. But if he can keep us mesmerized right here, we don't have relationship with our family. We're in the same room. We're at the same table. Watching the same TV program or whatever. But we are not together. Amen. And it's something that's, I, I, again, I know technology is a good tool to be used of good. But we ought to know as God's people, Satan is going to use it against us something that's harmless that we think is harmless that's not the, uh, within itself sin but we're making it that way so the old saying goes let me get to the message as the old saying goes everything rises and falls on leadership now the biggest part of that statement is, that is exactly right. So tonight, no, I don't want you young husbands to get mad at me, but tonight I'm dealing with the leadership. I'm dealing with the husband. I, I want to try to help and encourage some of our young daddies not to make some of the mistakes us boneheads made. Because again, I understand people are mostly the same, but folks, times have changed. And what might not have took us out, God, hey, the devil used to take you out. Amen. That's right. And he's attacking. So tonight, I just want to talk about the leadership of the home. Don't worry, I'm not going to fuss at you uh, at all. But you may ask the question, preacher, what kind of man or what kind of husband do I or daddy do I need to be? Well, the Lord gave me three things. He gave me three things tonight that I want to share with you and, and uh, about a, a, man, a, a man being Christ-like. Now, the first thought I want to share with you, a man of, hey, you need to be a man of Christ-like leadership. Now, notice verse number 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and is the Savior of the body. Right there in that verse, the Lord made the husband the leader of the home. Not the dictator, not the browbeater, but the leader. I didn't write that. I'm just stating a fact. And husbands, you have that responsibility. There was a group of women Ask, ask an evangelist's wife one time, said, how do you follow him? How, 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 do you, how do you stay by his side like that? 
she said, well, he's going to give account of how he follows God. And I'm going to give an account of how I follow him. So you tell me who, who's in the hot seat. The men are. And so a man, you need to be a man of Christ-like leadership. Now, again, this, in this text, uh, the Lord is using a comparison of the home, the husband, wife, uh, in comparison with Christ and the church. So, therefore, if the Lord is using that as a comparison, then, hey, if I'm going to be a Christ-like leader, what do I need to look at? How the preacher leads? How, how the deacons lead? No, how Christ led. We've got to say, hey, how can I be a Christ-like leader in my home? Well, you've got to lead like Christ. How did he lead? Number one, he led by example. This is deep stuff tonight. But he led by example. If we want to know how to live and act men and react, we got to look how Jesus lived, how Jesus acted, how Christ reacted. And that's how we lead, by example. Now again, I, myself and every daddy in here and every husband in here, uh, I understand we're just kind of queens because we've not arrived and we, we, we remember mistakes we've made and not being an example. But I'm not worried about what we was. I, I want to be concerned when we can get some help and move forward from here. That's why I'm not trying to dig up any kind of disappointment or mistakes in your life because we all got them. Every one of us have them. And I'm talking to these young daddies, but all of us, hey, I understand that. They say, there's, things, there's things that I wish I could go back and redo to my own wife and children. I wish I'd, I, I mean, I, I think back on some things, and I, and I struggle, Brother Steve, blaming myself for a lot of things. I, I, all the while trying to be a pastor and serve God, and then and there's areas I was neglecting my family. There was areas that I put them second. And I can't, I can't, make, I can't make my boys small and, and young again or faith. I, I, I have to, I have to, and I've asked them to forgive me before, and I, I, I ask the Lord to forgive me, and all I can do is move forward from here. Christ led by example, and we must do the same. You young daddies, if you want to be a right leader, lead like Jesus led. He led by example. Get this. He led by expectation. What are you talking about? I'm talking about with a purpose. Get this. Christ's purpose for us, again, this is, this is comparing Christ with the church in this text. But Christ's purpose for us is always positive, always with a purpose, and always product, with a productive purpose and a peaceful purpose. Christ doesn't drag us. Christ doesn't belittle us. Christ doesn't ignore us. As a matter of fact, he's, he, he's invited. Every time you read, come unto me. Every time you read, call unto me. Every time you read, hey, about prayer. Every day, that's God saying, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to make a difference in your life for righteousness and right and right purpose and right production. I want to be a part of that. It's hard to do that when we're sitting on the couch doing this. And I... I'm telling you, I'm not preaching to y'all, I'm preaching to us. Best thing we can do, best thing you can do, Dave, is you get home, go put this in another room somewhere. Best thing I can do when I get home, go put this in another room somewhere. Discipline yourself, say, look, I'm not fooling with this phone unless I get a call and have to talk to somebody, uh, but so much time a day, I'm putting it up. Now, this may sound funny, but it's the truth. You, you, may go, you may go into DTs for a day or two, but you'll finally get over it. That habit of grabbing it, that habit that for all these years, since they come out with these smartphones, we, all, we, we grab it, we grab it, and Satan has used it as a distraction to get 
daddies away from their family. That's right. How does Christ leave? He, lead, he leads by example, he leads by expectation, and he leads by encouragement. What do you mean? He is actively involved in our lives. He is actively involved. He's always, he's a hands-on father. That's right. He's a hands-on father. So a man, a man of Christ-like leadership, that's the very first thing. You've got to first lead right. If we don't lead right, we can't do anything else right. Get that. I know it's simple. But if we don't lead right, we can't do anything else right. man of Christ-like leadership. Notice, notice verse 25 with me now. Not only a man of Christ-like leadership, but in verse number, twi- verse number 25, we need a man of Christ-like love. You young dads, listen to me now. The Lord put this strong in my heart. I'm going to say something to you straight from my heart. And I'm living it. Daddy and mom ain't going to be there forever. They're not. Oh, oh growing up, I, I, you know, I, I've, been, I've been taught all my life, Jesus is coming back any day. So I, I was hoping we'd just all go in the rapture, but it didn't happen that way. It didn't happen that way. And there's going to come a time that you, you're not going to have that, 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 I don't know what you would call it, but that assurance that, you know what, I always got them to fall back on. I always got them. They're going to come a day, they're not going to be there. I was 26 years old when my mother died. And I was 40 or 41 when my daddy died. Come on. The, the ones that were my sounding board, the ones that, 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 that I had confidence that no matter what, I could call on them, that come a day that I had to be leader. Now, I'm not, I'm not, trying, to, I'm not trying to talk about my sister, but we're all like this. One of my sisters made this statement when my dad died. She said, you know what? Here's what I was guilty of. She said, when I had a problem, when I had a situation, when I had something going on, I called Daddy. She said, I didn't, tell, I didn't talk to my husband about calling Daddy. She said, through this, things is getting in order. Romans 8, 28, still in the book. That wasn't good, but it, some things work together for good. Amen. I didn't have perfection in parents, but I had good leadership. I had good leadership. I had a daddy that didn't mind, uh, didn't mind encouraging me. He didn't mind scolding me either. Even after I was an adult. My mother, on her deathbed, rebuked me. What did you do? I said, yes, ma'am. That's what I did. And I minded her. I popped something off to a family member, and she was laying there asleep while she was asleep. She woke up and looked me straight in the eye and pulled her little bony finger in my face and said, watch your mouth. I'm 26 years old. I didn't live in her house anymore. But I still believe she'd have reached up and slapped my jaws if I hadn't said nothing but yes, ma'am. Huh? And my daddy was standing there when she said it, so I knowed if she couldn't, he would. So I said, yes, ma'am. 
That's right. I don't know where I got to, but I'm going back to verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Let me say this, and I know you, I know you already know it, but, but many people think love is just a feeling. That's one of the most false statements that you could make. That love is just a a feeling. I've got, I've got Bible to back that up that it's more than just a feeling. It's more than just a word. It's more than just saying, I love you or have, I have a good, great feeling for some. It's more than that. The Lord makes it more than that. I think I'll use this illustration Sunday or one, one week. Jesus and Peter. Do you love me? Yes. Well, they should have just hugged necks and went on back to business. That didn't satisfy Christ. Show me. Feed my sheep. And he asked him three times. And all three times, it rung in Peter's mind of how much he denied Christ because that part of his life, it was just worth. George, I'll go to the end of the earth for you. Basically, he said, oh, I love you. He didn't show it. There wasn't, any, there wasn't any action behind it. And the Lord said, I want to I wanna know if you treat it's not just a, a happy feeling right now because I cooked some fish, but hey, it's going to get rough down the road. If you love me, show me. Well, we could go on. We could go on. Jesus, Jesus and Peter, folks, for God so loved the world. How? He showed it. He gave His only begotten Son. But God commendeth or proved or demonstrated His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus loved the church. How do we know? He gave Himself for it. So a man of Christ-like love will love the same way Jesus loved. By showing it, by sacrificing for it. Jesus did all the hard stuff and never complained. Can I get a witness? We didn't sacrifice anything. Christ sacrificed it all. And he never complained, never pouted, never fussed about it. But why? Because it was his position to do it. It was his God-ordained uh, uh, life to, to give his life. And he did that because that's what the Father said. Same thing. Husband, same thing. Show it. Show it sacrifice for it sustain it what do you mean continue by continuously showing it and sacrifice not one time all right honey i wash the dishes tonight and you think you're done for eternity ah right, honey i i got up with the youngest tonight well Bless you. Hello? It's a continual, excuse me, a continual sacrifice, a continual showing. It's every day. What kind of man I need to be? A man of Christ-like leadership. Lead by example. Lead by expectation with the purpose. Hey, Men, you ought to lead your wife and children with the purpose to bring her closer to the Lord. To bring peace and harmony in your home. I'm going to say this, and, I, and you say, what, when are you going to preach to the wives? As soon as God tells me to. I ain't got a problem with that. They need preaching to, too. Ain't one woman amen that. See, that got me so rattled, I don't forgot where I was at, Brother Jack. 
But there's not, there's not, I don't believe one saved woman that's, in, that's full of the Spirit of God, wants to do what's right. I don't think there's one saved woman that if you, if you lead like Christ and you love like Christ, that won't follow you. Now, if some of you have dropped the ball miserably of late and the Lord's dealing with your heart and you want to get it right and be those two things, I got one more though. Don't expect your wife just to jump on board. She's she going she gonna to have to watch you a week or two. You know, I've been a young husband before. I know how it works, honey. I'm sorry. I love you. And, you know, she forgives you and you give each other a little sugar and then next week you done forgot all that. You wives, can you amen that? Come on. Any marriage in this building that's 50-50 is a, is a troubled marriage. Any marriage in here that says, well, we're 50-50, that's a marriage in trouble. You've got half a marriage. If it's not 100 and 100, it's not, it's not nothing but a half a marriage. That's all it is. You've got a half a marriage. And you're in trouble. Come on. Young daddies, when kids grow up, they, they get out of the will of God. And they go wild and crazy. And I know sometimes that happens when you do everything right. Don't misunderstand me. But they ain't going to look at mama. Because I know in my day, I'd act up in school. And I've been told this. Once, who is your daddy? And you better watch it. I know your daddy. Not one of them ever said, who's your mama? And I know your mama. They'd say, and, and that'd get my attention. My mama was this tall. Is that about right? Weighed about 110 pounds. I smarted her off one morning before school, and she grabbed me by my shoulders, and she was going to shake me. And she shook me, but she was on one shake, and I was just standing there looking at her. I think I was about seven. No. <laughs> no, I was in high school. But when she wore herself out, she said, when your daddy, when I see you, see, there wasn't no cell phone. She couldn't send him a text. And I'm like, when your daddy gets here, my mom, I'm sorry, please go down. <laughs> Leadership. Leadership. The dad's the head of the home, mom's the heart of the home. The reason some of us in my generation ain't dead today because of the heart of the home. Because the head of the home son doesn't made up his mind to kill him. The heart of the home stepped in and said, Whoa, that's enough. Hmm? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But mama, I'm not here, I didn't mean to run this track, but mama. When them, when them youngins need it, don't stop him. You're gonna have some, you're gonna have some teenage hoodlums if you if you don't let him administer discipline. You, you're gonna have you're gonna have kids that nobody wants to be around. You're gonna have kids, uh, folks. I know things has changed, and I, and all I know is my day. If the teacher called the house, that was the gospel. Nothing I said worked. I come home and, and with a failing grade or something, and on a test, and I, I you know, I told mom's that teacher failed me. She said, "Really? She didn't give you the material to study. She didn't teach it. She didn't give you a, a study guide. She didn't give you time. Well, she did all that. She didn't fail you. You failed you. She didn't get in the car and go down there and get up in the teacher's face. I can't believe you failed, little Thomas. He's such a wonderful child." He ain't never done nothing wrong. No, she knowed. And she didn't stop the administration of the leader tanning me. Moms, don't do that. Don't do that. You're hurting your family when you're doing that. You're hurting your children when you do that. 
You go to another room and cry, they get it, but you'll be crying, you'll be crying more when you go to the prison to see them. Amen. Or keeping them up the rest of their life. Amen. Well, that ain't the message, but we're getting back where we were, as Brother Milton Taylor would say. A man of Christ-like leadership, a man of Christ-like love, and then let me close this wonderful message tonight. Man, listen to me. A man of Christ-like loyalty. A man of Christ-like... We could say a bunch of things about, about the, the characteristics of Christ, but one thing we'll all agree, Jesus is faithful. We'll agree there. Christ is faithful. Now, looking in the, uh, the, the old Schofield Dictionary, I have the Apple, I mean, the whole, old uh, Webster's Dictionary, 1828. The Lord gave me three thoughts about faithfulness in the definition. Number one, we see the firmness of faithfulness. The definition, firm in adherence to the truth and to duties. Firmly uh, 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 adhering to duty. Secondly, fidelity of faithfulness, constant in performance of duty. Firm and constant. Uh, young husbands, young daddy, hey, faithful. Firm in adherence to truth and your duties. And then fidelity of faithfulness, constant in the performance of the duties. Then the forthrightness of faithfulness, it says true. True to the marriage covenant. I want every, every man in here that I, that I perform the ceremony of your wedding to raise your hand. That's all of them. Thank you. Here's what you agreed to. When I give the vows, here is what you agreed to. I will live with her after God's ordinance in the holy, that's the word, state of matrimony. I will love her, honor her, and comfort her. I will keep her in sickness and in health. I will keep myself only unto her as long as we both shall live. That's what you said. I do, preacher. Before God, you said it. Before God, I said it. It's going on 32 years ago, June. 29th. You can, do you all know your anniversary, fellas? We need some Christ-like men leading their families. Leading their families leading their families. Again, I repeat, the breakdown of the home came when technology entered it. Not just cell phones, but video games. Come on. That's when, that's when your kids quit going outside. That's why you don't see any youngers riding bicycles anymore. That's why you ain't got to worry about going to the woods getting cut. They ain't going outside to go down there. Come on. I'm not saying all of you do that. I, I, but technology. It was, it's just easier to let technology raise our children. I'm not saying all technology is bad. I'm not saying you shouldn't dedicate time to technology. I mean, you, there's learning tools. I know that. I'm not saying go throw your phones out, go throw your everything, throw them in the garden. But if they're a hindrance, I, I, I'd put them up. I'm serious. God's working on me. I can't preach a message like this and, and, and not say, look, I got issues. Now, I'm, not, I'm not up here acting like, hey, I've arrived. I've not arrived.
it's, it's, it's those things in the home. God's gone. We barely ask the blessing over the food. There's no Bible reading. We, 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 there's nothing. Go, and it, it's just all, everything in our lives outside of coming to church on a lot of times, everything else is secular in our lives. And that's going to fall on leadership. I would encourage you young daddies and mamas to, it's getting pretty outside now. Getting pretty outside now. And I understand, you know, most of us, I don't have a house phone anymore. We just got, we just got the own people call my house phone. Well, I got a house number, but I didn't put a phone on it. Because I, I was tired of telemarketers calling. That's all anybody called me at home. I understand you, emergencies come. Set them on the porch and leave them there and go out in the yard and play with them. A lot, one hour, two hours. A lot, a lot four hours a week. Let your children get to know who you are. Come on. That's the best way I can think of to unwind from a hard day at work, man. Get out with a bat and ball with your kids or football or get out on a swing and, or, or play in the dirt with them. I have a lot of regrets in that time. Hey, I can't go back. I can't go back and redo. I, I wish I'd have done a hundred times more than that than I did. Because we started, when we, we, Thomas was two or three years old when we started this church and, and, and Taylor and, and Faith born here and, and, we try, and when my boys was little, we were trying to build a ministry here. And that had all of my attention all the time. Either going out visitation or trying to lead somebody to Christ or dealing with whiners and complainers and murmurs and, and then trying to keep your own self right. Letting your mouth get ahead of you, had to go. I mean, it's just always constant, 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 constant. And I miss some good times. I don't want that. For, I don't want that for you, young dad. I don't want that for you. God don't. God didn't want it for me, and God don't want it for you. He don't want it for you. Well, preacher, you were serving the Lord. I don't think God expects me to serve the Lord at the expense of my family. You can have. You can have the best of both worlds. If you figure out what, what you really need to do and what you don't at the moment. Hmm? I just tell you some of my mistakes, but I'm so confused, false one to another. I, I have cut I have cut vacations short to come home for people that didn't belong here that didn't really like me just to preach their funeral. I had my time to go over there. I said, I'm out of town. You have to get somebody else. You already hate me, so what difference does it make? Well, that was awful. Well, that's just the truth. Or allow some, you know, I was on vacation. I had a, had a family call me. The husband called me, tell me they was leaving the church. I'm on vacation. Well, that vacation was ruined. I come home. I was tore up. I wish I just said, well, bye. I'm on vacation. Nothing I can do to stop it, no how. I'm not trying to get you sympathy. I'm not trying to get you sympathy. I'm talking about this was, that's my fault. My kids never complain. My wife never complained. We packed up and come home. And I and I make promises. We'll do this, do that, and the other. Some of them I kept, some of them I didn't. Just to be, I'm just telling you right. I'm talking about something going on a cruise. You ain't got phone service. But I'll be back there. Me and Kim enjoying the sunset, and I'll see a little old John boat coming. Hey, preacher! <laughs> My great, 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 great cousin died. Can you do the funeral? Yeah, I reckon. Throw me on the float. Amen. You know, I, I preach against putting sports and thing, activities before the Lord, and you shouldn't. But that's, there's nothing wrong with getting involved in that stuff for your kids. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you put, put it in its proper place. The only thing I'm against is when it gets out of order. 
Amen. Amen. And, and I believe you agree with that. Even, it might be good, but it, preacher, I know I shouldn't put that before God. I know I, 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 shouldn't, I shouldn't be on a ball field on Wednesday night. Amen. I should be on a ball field on Sunday. I ought to have my family in church. Amen. I promise you, if more Christian parents made a stand, they'd change some stuff. They did. Hey, Taylor, uh, he, he was on a, cha- he, a championship baseball team, and, and, the, and the playoff game was on, on Wednesday night. Three pastors' boys was on the team, and every one of them played positions. And the coach turned around and said, I think the game was at 7 o'clock Wednesday night. He turned around, and I don't know, I, I wouldn't even think about them. We were standing next to each other, and everyone started one time going. He said, come on, I'll pick them up. I said, that ain't the point. Not, we said, not only are we going to be at church, they're going to be at church. And he went and begged and pleaded, and they moved the game to eight. I don't care if, you're, if your little boy, a little girl wears their ball suit here on Wednesday night. No problem with that. That blowed your mind, didn't it? <laughs> I come watch them all again. I, 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 I enjoy it. Nothing wrong with that. And daddies, if you're on the couch watching ESPN and mama dragging three or four or five children to this game, that game, the other, you need to be beat up. I'm too old to do it, but I think I can raise up enough money to have it hired out. Of course, you never underestimate an old man. I watched a video clip. This young boxer pretty gloves on with a man I think is 80 year old, and that 80 year old man just beat the fire out of him. <laughs> old boy's like this, begging for mercy. Old man still. Uh, uh. <laughs> it, it has been a blessing the last few years, and I'm closing. At least if you come to the piano, I'll close. The last few years to watch you, young, you couples that's my, my, oh, young enough to be my children, marrying the will of God, bring your family to church. I see you growing. I see you worshiping God coming in together. As a matter of fact, I have people watch some of you. And you are being a blessing to them. They tell me. They tell me. That they said that that and call their names. That just watching that family come in together and and go to the altar together and 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 do these things. It's just a blessing. It is a blessing. It is a blessing. And I love every one of you. I give you anything I got. I, I love you. Except my Camaro, you can't have that. But everything else, you can have it. Fate's already got that. Daddies, Christ-like leadership, Christ-like love, Christ-like loyalty. Where are you at? Let's all stand. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Miss Lisa's playing. The altar's open. The altar's open. Folks are coming. Anybody of any age, if you have a need, you need to come. You need to come. Whatever your need might be tonight, you, the altar's open for you. The altar's open for you. Maybe here tonight you've never been saved. You never you never call on the Lord to save you. Preach, I need to be born again. I've never trusted Christ and Him alone. Anything you add to salvation in Christ, and you say, "Well, I have to do this and that," 
you're adding works to God's grace, that's not salvation. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's the gospel of John chapter 14, verse 6. I didn't write it. The Bible says there's only one mediator between God and man, and that's the man, Christ Jesus. So if you, if you trust in Christ and you say, well, I'd trust in Christ, but I had to do this, had to do that, that's, that's not biblical salvation at all. Search your heart. Search your heart. Maybe you're here tonight and you, you say, preacher, you might be a young dad, you might be a middle-aged one, older one, you might be a, a mom dad. Preacher, the message touched my heart in some areas and I need prayer. God bless you. My hand's up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. I see you. 